Gloucestershire kick-started their NatWest T20 Blast campaign with a thrilling four-wicket win with just one ball to spare against Middlesex at Merchant Taylor School in Northwood. Davi Milan batted after winning the toss and that gave the home support an early chance to see new signing Brendan McCullum, who struck the fourth ball he faced in Middlesex colours for a six. The next ball, an attempt to repeat the shot off a quicker delivery from Graham Van Buren, led to McCullum lobbing up a simple return catch. It was nine for two in the second over as Michael Klinger hung on very well, running back from slip to remove the inform Milan for just a couple. So it was left instead to Paul Sterling to get the scoreboard ticking over as he was soon into his groove on a very chilly summer's evening. Australian debutant Andrew Ty was brought on for the sixth over and his first delivery was pulled over long leg for a six by Sterling who was by now looking good. 43 for two was the score at the end of the power play and the 50 was reached in the seventh over with Owen Morgan clearing the rope off the former Middlesex spinner Tom Smith. But when Morgan tried something similar in the next over, he was held right on the boundary rope by Ian Cobain, Benny Howell the successful bowler. Morgan departed for 13 at 52 for three and by the halfway stage of the innings that read 67 for three and Sterling continued to impress with his second maximum, taking the Irishman into the 40s. His half century was then completed in over number 13. It had occupied 37 balls and contained five fours and two sixes, an important knock for his star-filled team. Three figures were on the board after 14 overs, Sterling and Adam Voges taking their partnership into the 50s and now looking for a strong finish. And that's what Sterling aimed to do, launching Howell over long on for a huge six. But next ball, he was a goner, Gareth Roderick having to wait an age for the ball to land in his gloves off a big top edge. Sterling was out for 60 at 113 for four. Howell with figures of two for 23 from his four overs and then John Simpson, Ed Smith to Norwell to fall for two. So there was now a lot for Voges to do from the remaining three overs. Especially when James Franklin holed out to Chris Dent to give Ty his maiden wicket for the Gloucesters. There was time left for some serious clubbing from Toby Rowland-Jones to get the total up to something challenging. The penultimate over from Norwell went for 14. Voges then completed his 50 off 38 balls with just four fours as Middlesex settled for a final total of 159 for nine. Rowland-Jones slicing a shot off tie to Norwell at short third man. Before the former Gloucestershire man James Fuller was run out without troubling the scorers. Harry Podmore then went in the same way to the final ball of the innings as he tried to scamper a second run, leaving Voges unbeaten on a steady but important 52. Gloucestershire had never lost to Middlesex in eight games in this format, but they were up against it when Michael Klinger had his stumps disturbed in the first over of the reply, out for a very rare duck. Roland Jones was in business again in his next over as Hamish Marshall picked out Morgan at backward point to go for 10 at 16 for 2. That became 43 for two at the end of the power play as Dent began to find the boundary rope. It was very much game on at this stage with the power play scores for both teams identical. Cobain and Dent then tried to push things along for the visitors and in doing so, they just began to put their side on top. By the halfway point of the reply, these two had taken the total along to 78 for two, their partnership into the 50s and that left a further 82 runs to get from the last 60 balls. So a wicket for Middlesex was vital and Cobain on 40 supplied it when he picked out Roland Jones in the deep off Franklin. Gloucestershire brought up their 100 in over 14 and with wickets in hand they were now favourites especially with Dent still in and seeing the ball well in spite of the very gloomy conditions. Howell also started to pick up the pace with some important boundaries just when they were required. The target reduced to 42 off the final five overs. An exceptional bit of keeping from Simpson then gave Middlesex some hope. Dent out for 45 at 120 for four. But just a couple of balls later, man of the match Howell drove Sterling down the ground for a cleanly struck six, leaving 32 to find off 24 balls. With 21 to get, Howell missed time to hit off Ravi Patel to be caught by the bowler. The tension was mounting, 20 needed off the final two overs. 
Jack Taylor, fresh from a match-winning ton in the championship, then struck fuller for successive boundaries to put his side on the edge of victory, before the bowler retorted by bowling the all-rounder for 14 with nine runs required, six balls to get them from, and two new batsmen at the crease. Podmore was given the ball. The first delivery cost one run, the second was a dot, the third a single, and then Roderick squeezed a full toss to the third man fence. Three now needed off two balls. And the penultimate one was hit over the mid-wicket boundary by Roderick to start the celebrations for the visitors as they kept their unbeaten record against his opponents in T20 cricket. The margin of success was four wickets with just one ball to spare. Gloucestershire now head to Kent on Friday while Middlesex turn their attentions to the start of the Royal London One Day Cup 